This is indeed a very proud and a very glorious day, a very long-awaited day for all of the people of Hawaii. And as the years go by, we forget the things that have been very, very important and now part in the history of Hawaii. And it is very, very essential for us from time to time to pause and for us to reflect upon where we have been and where it is that we are headed. What well, he kept us always thinking about the future. And he always talked about the preferred future. And if we were guided by that, he trusted that we will do the right thing and make the right decisions. And it's, a, it's, it's his ability to keep us focused about looking to the future and that everything we do must not be done out of expediency, but it must be done with a purpose in mind and with a cause upon which we conduct ourselves. And that's the silent and quiet leadership that you find in a man like Governor Haryoshi. I have never seen it elsewhere before. The governor didn't know, but when he was running for the Senate, state senator, the campaign guys would talk and say, you know, this guy, he's such a good person. You know, I think one day he's gonna be governor. And we never told him that. And he wouldn't believe us anyway. But then when they offered him to run for lieutenant governor, a lot of us smiled and said, I think he's on his way. He and Jack Burns are examples of integrity, public service. What they do is for the public, not for personal gain. Governor Ariyoshi, upon being elected governor in 1974, provided a breakthrough for the then called Rainbow State of Hawaii. The implication here is, is that a person of color in Hawaii can reach the very high level of being governor. And we didn't think about the first Nisei governor or what. I think we were more happy that a local boy came governor. Yeah, he always walked fast. <laughs> he had a long stride. He still does. We used to talk about trying to keep up with him. You know, he was always looking to the future. He was always looking to how he can help our state become a better society. He looked to see how he could build a new generation of people to participate in government because he believed in government. And he believed that government was a powerful force to do good for our society. The 70s, when, the, when Governor Ryoshi was in office, was a time of a lot of dynamic change in Hawaii. And somebody needed to say, whoa, you know, where is this all going? How does it all fit? The state was going through some real growing pains. Uh, population was increasing. People were concerned about, you know, the environment, about the use of uh, our resources like water. And uh, he came forward and he put together his state plan. The Hawaii state plan that he put together was basically the first ever real state plan Hawaii ever had. He put his heart and soul into that plan because he felt so strongly that it embraced the future and he's always thought about the future. Here in the Aloha State, we are determined that the wave of the future will be a wave we generate, not one that rolls over us like a giant tidal wave that could destroy this fragile and this very lovely place. Finding what I have called the preferred future is not an easy task, but we are at work on it, and we shall continue. Uh, one, he wanted to keep uh, the Windward Side uh, country, so he used surplus funds to purchase some lands. To keep those lands in Ag, or to keep them forever pristine. Why hold it, why can't it? Hey, Ian, Matt, same point. The Sacred Falls, 1,500 acres and then Pounders Bowl and Ka'iaka Point, Haliba Town, etc. There's so many. 
He wanted to preserve agricultural lands so that Hawaii could feed itself. So every time I watch TV and see, and see the farmers saying, buy local, I think of George Ariyoshi. We needed more tourists from Asia. So he quietly, very quietly, made good friends with the leaders of Japan, Korea, China, the Philippines. And today we have a lot of tourists coming from those areas. He didn't want to just depend on sugar and tourism. So he started new industries, diversified ag, aquaculture. Again, he built the NELH Park. He had the leading energy program in the nation based on R&D for OTEC, geothermal, ethanol by gas, hydropower and wind. I think the, the state plan, which isn't sexy and isn't dramatic, is one of the more important things that George Ariyoshi did for Hawaii. And then as a banker, I couldn't let it pass by not saying that he was fiscally very prudent, left Hawaii with a surplus, uh, created a rainy day fund, which carried Hawaii through many other tight, tough periods in the future. And he saved the state millions and millions of dollars when you compare his style of bargaining with the others. He's working quietly and effectively to do what is best for Hawaii. He's we were running in a very tough campaign and we were way behind. And we had a national uh, pollster come in and do a poll, told us to our faces that George should drop from the race because people didn't feel that he communicated very well. George's style was to never take credit for anything, to have it happen and just be happy and, and satisfied that he got the goals he wanted to accomplish. So I told the poster, i never forget him, his name was Peter Hart, and I said, uh, Mr. Hart, you just don't understand, you've just described two really great qualities. People like quiet and effective people who do the job and let others take credit. And so I was privileged to coin the term quiet and effective. And it worked so well, toward the end of the campaign, the uh, opposition started calling him old, quiet, and effective and attacking him. And I knew at that point that we were gonna win that campaign. I remember a story once that he told me where there was a new president of the University of Hawaii uh, who was struggling to, to gain traction with the university community. He told the president, you go back and you tell the faculty and the people at the university that you had to fight with me very, very hard to get the appropriated funds released. But I'm telling you right now, I'm going to release it. But I don't want you to tell them that. I want you to tell them, go back and tell them that you had to fight with me really hard to get that money. And I think that was a really interesting way of saying that he was willing to take a political hit in order to reinforce the leadership capabilities of, a, of the president of the university. At, at one period, uh, we didn't have the funds to give public employees pay raises. But the legislature gave themselves and the governor a pay increase. The governor was very disappointed. So what he did was take the money that he got and donated all of it to charity. And he didn't want us to publicize it. He wanted us to keep it quiet. And no one, even people who disagree with him, who dislike him, won't say he doesn't have integrity. Well, when I was in the state senate, I was chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. There were times when I would get into it with the governor. When I became governor, I understood better what he had to do and what he went through. So I learned a lot from him, from his example. But there's another side to the man. And that is the part where he taught us how to be fathers. He pointed out to me and said, never let your secretary tell your children when they call that you're too busy. Pick up the phone, answer their call. If you are busy, let them know you're busy. But he says, make sure you assure them you'll call them back. And you know the long hours that we spent at our jobs? It was possible because you had a person like him as our governor and as our leader. And so working long hours was not a problem. He just reminded us, remember your children. I think I'm very lucky because many people can say that how my father was a great governor, 
but I can say I'm one of the few who can say he's also a great father. I have the greatest respect for him and um, he's my hero. He's given up and sacrificed his life, a good part of his life, the good years of his life for the people of Hawaii. And, um, and he did that because he really cares for Hawaii. And he thought it was very important at a time when Hawaii was identifying who we were after statehood, when the community got together, we could get involved in defining what our future was. And knowing that, I would say he was a great leader, he's a great person, and um, I love him for that. I think his greatest contribution is that he was a great shepherd of the society that we enjoy today. He was such a humble man, and he always credited where he is, what he is at the moment, to the people that supported him. And so he used that phrase, I am who I am because of you. Well, you know, it's a very uh, interesting thing because the way we felt about him is that we are who we are because of him. The future really is not just the physical future, but you're talking about you want the land future to be good. You want the financial future to be good. You don't want to put a burden on those who follow you. And I think primarily people forget about the future because they look to credit rather than creating a good future. And they want to get credit for what they, whatever they do. And that, I think, uh, makes it very difficult for people to think about the future. At age 88, I didn't anything that I want for myself, uh, but I still want a good future for those who are going to be following us. And I'm very grateful to so many people who understood what I was trying to do. My family has been very supportive, and I couldn't do anything without the kind of support that they, and understanding that they provided to me. I'm grateful to so many people who made it possible for me to be able to think about the future and think about what I want to see happen. Happy birthday, Gov. It's good to be here with all of your friends and with your family, to wish you well, and to thank you for all the things that you have done for Hawaii. And I especially appreciate our relationship, my being your Lieutenant Governor and being your friend for all of these years. So on behalf of my family and myself, happy birthday. Governor, thank you very much for your many years of public service. Vicky joins me in wishing you a very, very happy birthday. Governor, I just calculated that it's been over 28 years since you and I have had offices next to, to one another. And I can tell you that it's been an absolute privilege for me to be able to watch you and become a, be a colleague of yours. Um, and I wanted to wish you a very, very happy 88th birthday. Uh, George, I'd like to wish you a very happy birthday. Uh, there's a lot of friends out there that would like to wish you the same thing. For those that are not here today, I'd like to say happy birthday in behalf of all of us. Governor, happy birthday. Happy birthday, George. 88, it's hard to believe. We've been together for almost 50 years, and every campaign, you look younger and I look older. You're the youngest looking 88 I know. Governor Arayoshi, happy birthday. And we want to congratulate you and salute you for all that you have done for not only us personally, but for the state of Hawaii. And we thank you very, very much and have a very happy birthday with many more years to come. Thank you, Governor. Dad, the world knows you as the Governor Ariyoshi who has brought countries and people together and loved and supported the youth of Hawaii. I saw you doing this every day till late at night, this great man working steadfast in his dedication to make life better for all of the people and for future generations. I am so proud to be your daughter and feel so lucky to be able to call you Dad. I have been looking up to you all my life. Thank you for your unfailing support, strength, 
wisdom, kindness, generous spirit, and especially your unconditional love. You are a treasure in my life. You have always been there for me. You are my rock. Sky and I wish you a very happy birthday, and we are looking forward to many, many more happy years ahead. I love you, Dad. Happy birthday. Dad, you will always be my governor. I believe my father had great vision as governor. Fiscal responsibility, he streamlined government, never raised a cent of taxes in his 14 years as governor. Governor Ariyoshi had promoted Hawaii at the center of the Asia and Pacific region. Dad, you will always be our governor. I, I thank you for being a great person to our family, being a great father. Um, I have learned a lot from you. I know I can never be as good as you, but I try. And um, thank you for all you do for, for us. And I look forward, Dad, to another 88 years with you, if I can live that long. I love you, Dad. Happy birthday, George. And thank you for all the wonderful years of journeying through life together with you. It's been great, it's been fun, it's been exciting. We've watched you throughout the years, and you taught us about Okage Sama Day. I am what I am because of you. And I know your father taught you that one never does anything alone. He needs the help of others. And we've seen you do this. You've asked the unions, the community, the public employees to help you. And you gave credit where credit was due. And so would like to say the kids and I, to you, Okage Sama Day, we are what we are because of you. And we want to thank you for that. Happy birthday, George. We love you. <laughs>